Before we get into it, I just want to say that the code is available on my GitHub page. It includes the code for the evolutionary agent. So if you're curious to look at that, go ahead and take a look. Otherwise, enjoy the video. The algorithm in use in this video is called the evolutionary algorithm. It sort of mimics the behavior of living organisms with a survival of the fittest mentality. It starts off with a randomly initialized group of agents that play the game. In this case, you see a bunch of Pac-Mans running around. Those are all the individual agents for the, for the first generation. The agent with the highest score is considered the best agent and is then used to breed the next offspring of agents. This algorithm follows a Darwinism evolutionary science where behaviors that result in the highest scores are passed on to the next generation while poorly performing agents get killed and replaced. Before we get into the details of this algorithm, it'd be good to discuss the reinforcement learning framework so that you have a good conceptual idea of what's happening behind the scenes. For every reinforcement learning problem, there's an agent and an environment, where the agent sends an action to the environment, while the environment then sends back a state and reward to the agent to give the agent feedback. This cycle continues until eventually the environment reaches an endpoint. So I did use the evolutionary algorithm to solve Pac-Man, but there are some interesting differences between the evolutionary algorithm and the Q-learning algorithm. I did use the Q-learning algorithm to solve the cliff walking problem and also the mountain car problem and the cart pull problem. All of those videos are available on my channel, so give those a watch. I think it would be best to describe Q-learning first and then change to the evolutionary algorithm because Q-learning is a bit more intuitive to explain. The cliff walking problem they're looking at right now is the quintessential problem in Q learning. It's sort of the most beginner problem that you can tackle with Q learning and is available on the OpenAI website. Here the little elf or leprechaun, either or, starts in the bottom left hand corner and sort of wants to make its way to the bottom right hand side. An episode is the duration from beginning to end and at each time step or each step that the elf takes, the agent receives a reward of negative one. And so the major goal is for the elf to get to that goal in the least number of steps. And so in your mind, you can sort of trace out what, that, what those steps would be. But the goal is to get a model to do it for you so that through exploration and exploitation, the agent can sort of figure out what that path would be. And surprisingly, this is very easy for us to do because for humans, this is not a hard problem but getting a computer to do it is an entirely different situation. The way you solve this problem is by thinking about each step the elf takes as a quality step. So for example, that each time the agent makes a choice, like going up or down or left or right, that costs something. There's a consequence associated with taking that, that step. And so that means that each step the elf takes needs to have a quality score associated with that. And that quality score is called the Q value. You can imagine that this framework sort of solves all of our issues, right? So as long as we can quantify a signal from our environment, our agent can learn just about anything. But that's not the case, unfortunately. So let's take the case of Pac-Man, for example. This is an example of an agent I pulled at random. And you can kind of see that Pac-Man in this case sort of just wanders around. It goes back and forth, doesn't really know exactly where it's going, and doesn't have much of a direction. This is because for most of the inputs that the agent puts in, there really isn't any feedback. So you can see it kind of jiggling back and forth. During those moments, the, the reward is zero. So there is no Q value to, to learn from. And so in this situation where there is no information in our gradients and there's nothing really to tap into in terms of signal, we have to turn to a different type of algorithm to solve this environment. And so that's kind of where the evolutionary algorithm comes in because what we're doing is we're creating a generation of agents whether it be a hundred or a thousand for example and they all play the environment at the exact same time and then whoever scores the highest then has a more fit agent and then that agent gets passed on to the next generation creating hundreds or thousands of agents allows for our algorithm to explore as many states as possible at the same time and so it really allows for certain behaviors to like learn between generations, for example. You should also know that this algorithm is very, very bad at within generation optimization. It's very good uh, on very broad generation to generation, but doesn't really hone in on uh, within generation optimization. 
Within generation optimization is more of a key learning approach where within generation to generation is an evolutionary algorithm approach. The best way to figure out where this signal is coming from so the agent can really hone in on it is to explore the state space as fast as possible. And making hundreds of agents explore the state gives our algorithm that opportunity to explore the state as thoroughly as possible. That's what you're seeing on the screen as well. So you're seeing lots of agents just randomly move around the screen to ensure that it finds the most optimal agent. And then that agent, its weights, the neural network weights that is, get passed on to the next generation, and then that generation starts from where that best agent left off. For the sake of simplicity, I followed the instructions in the paper, which was to take the best agent and then sample from a Gaussian, then add the Gaussian to the weights, and then start that next generation. And I found that this was a good approach, but it had flaws. So for example, I did mention earlier that the approach is only as good as the uh, optimization within generations or from generation to generation. And this approach cares more about generation to generation, which means that the models really don't get updated as well within generation. And so my agent's kind of dumb, and I think it's because my model isn't very good. So my neural network architecture sucks, and I'm currently researching ways to make it better so that I can explore using EA evolutionary algorithms to explore the wide state space of these vast reinforcement learning environments while making sure that my models are being updated properly as the learning goes on. So, so far in my self-study journey, I have learned that EA is a very good way of exploring a wide range of states for any reinforcement learning task, but it is very bad at finding an optimal model and uh, finding information from those models to then pass on to, to the next generation because it's still unclear to me how to obtain the information from the neural networks and pass that information on to the next generation. So say, for example, one of the agents finds those little nuggets that turn the ghosts into like ghosts that can be eaten. That's an important thing that can be passed on to the next generation. And it's not uh, apparently obvious to me how I can obtain that information from a neural network and then pass it on to the next generation so that, so that they can also play with that skill and enhance it as time goes on. So that's a non-obvious thing that I've noticed during my studies. So that's all I have for now. These videos are very informal where I read a bunch of stuff I find interesting, implement some algorithms and make content about it. If that interests you, then consider subscribing and liking and I'll see you soon.